Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 99. This is the last time this slide will look basically exactly like this because I'm pretty sure 100 is not going to fit in the end there, which is actually a pretty cool problem to think about. it. We were just talking before the meeting going, wow, 100, that seems like a lot, which basically means roughly two years. But Two and wow. a half. Yeah, two and a half, wow. Yeah. August, August 22nd, 2013 is our first All right. one. Well, it's February 26th, 2016. Let's go get into the agenda of today. Uh, Wix 3.10.3, because we talk about that every week until we give up, and we're not giving up yet, so we're talking about it again. We'll do our triage. Oh, I left out a bullet point. Bad agenda updater. Uh, we'll talk about the Wix online meeting. Kind of brought it up a little bit last week, but I want to talk about it this time. So while it's not in the agenda bullets, it will show up after triage, and then we'll do usual, usual questions and comments and reactions. Um, these meetings are recorded, as always, for those people that aren't with us right here, right now. Moving on, 3.10.3. So, uh, there is actually a little bit of update here. Um, actually did a bunch of pushing uh, in the last week, trying to get an MSRC opened against it, since it's not really an MSRC, but was trying to get them to think about it as an MSRC, since it was preventing other people from getting a security fix. That didn't exactly work, but it did get them to kind of think harder about this problem that we really are serious about it. Um, and apparently the GDI guys sent back, a GDI Plus team sent back a potential workaround that isn't a workaround we can do because it has something to do with purely managed code and we didn't quite communicate well enough that we need a solution to native code. But the fact that they responded at all is encouraging. So hopefully they'll come back again. And this was like, I don't know, yesterday or late Wednesday or something like that. So I have hope that they'll come back with another uh, answer soon, and we will try something. So I still have hope for this. We'll roll into March, and I want to give one more week since I actually got something promising, and then we'll talk about what we're doing with 3.10.3. Cool, cool. All right, if we want to talk about it, we can talk about it later again. Um, let's go jump into triage and do that, because we have a few bugs. Bob, you ready? I am ready. All righty then. Um, I don't know, what did I have here? Uh, seven and four closed, so interesting. Almost half are closed. This is one of them? I'm not going to uh, bother. Might refresh. I think we have more than that. I'm showing eight and three. Yeah. Which yeah. I guess also adds up to 11, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, so that means one of the closed ones was reopened. Um, in the end, I don't need to go into this one, but it looks like this Docker thing is a problem with... Windows and Docker and stuff like that, and they're running down the issue, not us, thank goodness, because yep. I didn't know how that was going to be us. You know, the keyboard's supposed to work here, but not. I saw a mouse. Configure user fails when it can't check the existence of the domain, and no action is required. Um, yeah, this is a handling of the error code, I think. And in fact, uh, we're going to do a pull request that actually reviews this bug, I believe. So I would say we take this in 3.11 because there's actually a fix for it. Um, and then we will do the work in. We will need to get it in 4 as well. But Does this actually fail? Does it, like, fail the custom action or? Yes. Oh, yeah, I see, I see. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I agree. That's bad behavior. Yeah. And normally I'd be like, cool, 3x, but because we have a fix for it, I think we should put it in 3.11. I'm fine with that. Hey, they're going to do the work to do the right thing. They're going to get rewarded for it. Um, harvest type not found in list of loaded. Right, so this is a port question. Yes. Can you help me? It's a pretty good trigger for, uh, yeah, go talk to my analyst. Um, and we decided we're going to do issue templates, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. We didn't, uh, you know, actually, like, say when. No, no, I was I'm just to do that. Well, and this would have been before that anyway, I think. Well, maybe not. Um, ago. No, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> no, I saw this and went, oh, damn it. Oh, well. <sighs> Next time. Yep. Documentation for restriction of package patches is broken. Yeah, I think the things, I think the common theme across all these pages is tables. Yep. I think the yep. tables are getting goofed up. So we need to, they're indented probably is what's happening, and they're being picked up as um, pre-code, I bet. Well, but they actually appear in tables. Pre-code is inside tables. It's a little weird. Mm. I don't know. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, yes, this is a bug. We 
going to drop in that web milestone and roll with it? That works for me. Just need to get a need to get the fix in for whatever those things are going. Go look at that. Related bundle logging doesn't respect the parent bundle log. If you bundle with a log parameter to this, all the logs end up there except those are related bundles. They still go to temp. Oh. Yeah. Makes it challenging when you're trying to, you know, diagnose a related bundle problem. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Um well, yeah. I um is this a four bug? Uh, I waffle. I mean, it's a change in behavior. But yeah, if you've gotten used to it. Really bad behavior. I, I don't disagree, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with this going into four. Yeah, I think so. I think it's four. Also, we survived, you know. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Six, three, seven, three, eight, three, nine, <laughs> three, ten, zero, one, and two so far with, with this bug. So and it's it, obviously not something that a lot of people do. And it I think wouldn't probably people don't use paths when they, if they use the log switch at all. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, Vern does all this by default, I'm betting a lot of people don't use the log switch at all, and those who do probably just use it to control the name mm -hmm. more than the location. Yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah, that's right, Heath. The, the, the log name is correct. It, it correctly um, reflects the, the base name. Um, but the path, yeah. It's messed up. Path is wrong. So, four. That works. Burn fails to pass ancestor this bug. This came to us. This is the one I reopened. Yes, because we got this as a support ticket, Fire Giant, that we just had to go fix. Um, yeah, so uh, the... How does this go? The different versions, different versions of burn do not get the ancestors which means the uh, child if if a relate if an add-on bundle is a different version of from the other from the main bundle the add-on bundle on uninstall whatever will constantly repair the parent but it won't pass the information necessary for the parent to know that it was being repaired by a child which then causes it to go into full repair mode which then what can turn it around turn around and go back and repair the add-on bundle again or something like that yeah, you you can end up depending on how your stuff was authored, you can end up where you're essentially repairing each other forever. Right. Yeah. Bad bad bug. Um, so I, this is the funny thing is that I th we were talking about this when this when I saw a ticket come through and I, I I think it was Bob. You've convinced me that we probably should take this for three ten three to stop the bleeding on this problem. Yeah, this is this is potentially pretty severe. Um, if you, you should add-on bundles it, with different versions of burn. yeah, it it only it only affects add-on bundles, and it's only a problem if you use different versions of burn to build the different bundles. The problem is anything 3.9 or greater has this has this issue. And the cool thing about add-on bundles it, and related bundles in general is that you know, they're designed to be separate. So if you end up in a, you know, pretty common cases, oh, look, you know, version one of the product uses this version of Wix. Uh, version two of the product uses the next version. But in, you know, in between times, you have the, this add-on bundle that was built with, you know, the, the previous version. And they're, the related bundles are supposed to be independent that way. Um, and... If you know, there, there's no need with this related bundle support for the you know to everything ship in lockstep. So this is a really cool feature, but um, this bug impacts as soon as you have any any change. And the reason I think it needs to go into 3.10.3 is that we are pushing people to use well 3.10.2 and then 3.10.3. Um, so we're just increasing the likelihood that people are going to pick up. A later version a later expose version. yourselves to this bug. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even think about how we were forcing quick drop. Yeah. So yeah, I th yeah, let's put this in three ten three. And you've you've, I mean, it's your release, but I'm now. <laughs> that um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm I'm the one I'm the one who really wants to push it. It's 
I think it's a serious enough bug that uh, it it needs to get into a release as soon as possible. Because uh, we the problem is that this you know in the in the the way the products are released is that this bug exists in your shipping product, and the only way to fix it is by upgrading the version of Burn that you use to build. Yeah. Um, and that's just that's just really bad. So I think we need to be able to say, well, this is a this is a bit of a pain, but you need to take this and look. Here's the version that with the fix. Because the other problem is you might be able to work around it. Like um, it, the problem does not. Uh, reproduce if you build both the um, add-on bundle and the dependent bundle with the same version of the tool set. So uh, an easy fix is to say, oh, well, just rebuild with, you know, whatever version you're using today and every, everyone's going to be fine, except all you're, all you're doing is you're pushing the problem out one that, more release. That end, and we need people to move into 3.10.3 as soon as it comes out. Uh, also, which yes, absolutely. absolutely. Which absolutely. makes absolutely. it even worse. All right. Uh, Jacob, can you expand a bit? Um, Codeflex didn't get updated to start forcing. Three, it should be, 3.10.2 should be the default uh, download on Codeflex. If it's not, that's just a dumb mistake on my part. Yeah, it's the default. 3.10.2 is the default today. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> the so, Jacob, let's bring this up in the comments and questions. Well, let's remind me to revisit this, all right? And we'll come back. Let's get through all the bugs first. Um, so we have a label or a milestone for 3.10.3, right? If not, we should, and let's put this in there. Um, okay. Uh, there, we don't. I'll add it. There is a fix already uh, that we've been testing at Fire Giant, and we're pushing to three to Wix three here. That's why it's got closed. So when Bob did the work to get it out of our world, it closed this issue accidentally. So it's back again. Pull request open. We'll get that moving forward. Da, 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 da. Should be opt in. I think this is. Related, yeah. This is the the other discussion we had was the maybe you shouldn't be having this magic uninstalling and installing of add-on bundles um, if you don't need to, especially if you don't have any overlap between add-on bundles. You don't need to do the repair of the old thing, um, so you you could actually save yourself a lot of time if the add-on bundle has nothing to do with the old one. So why declare an add a related bundle? I don't, I mean, the, well, so there is, no, so there's the magic behavior where the doing something to the add-on causes the main to be changed. That's the part that's magic. The part where the main removes the add-ons or the patches, that's the normal behavior. You only need to repair or other, to relaunch the main uh, bundle from an add-on or from a patch to fix it should the add-on or patch contain stuff that's also in the main. That's the, really the only reason to do that. Or maybe some other kooky thing that you need to do, but like you broke the component rules or and you have the same reg key in two places or something like that. But I think this is arguing that we should opt into it versus um, have to do that. It's definitely a regression. Um, but it was, it was part of... It's part of the magic behavior. Remember, originally related bundles, except for upgrades, were basically notifications for the BA, right? So the BA could make decisions based on uh, getting the detect related bundle message. Um, in 3.9, someone, and I won't mention any names, Heath, um, did the magic behavior. That was, that was new. That was new to 3.9. So it's that that behavior um, was new to three nine. So three six, three seven, three eight. You know, they didn't have um, the automatic repair. That's that's why I open the. You know, it should be. The, these are two two things, and they should be separate. Um, a lot of people won't need 
the repair behavior. So it may, makes sense to make it opt-in. It could also be opt-out. I mean, either way. Could go that way, too. Patches, you could maybe argue, should be defaulted in, and add-ons could be defaulted out, maybe, if you want to get to it, because generally an add-on shouldn't carry what's in the main, um, and but a patch could um, more yeah. often than not. I mean, I, I, I don't know. But I, I, this does sound like something we should have a whip for to describe this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Probably should have, well, it would have been good to have a whip for the first one. Um, and just kind of go through this. It would be great if the whip also talked about what the three behavior was and the four behavior so we could get that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I don't want the different defaults based on the on the type. Um, yeah, I don't. I was just tossing out as the, you know. <laughs> what is the right default? What is the right default? What's, you you could right argue that those it. switches, are, you know, it might flip-flop between patching and add-ons. But in general, add-ons shouldn't repair the main ones. And there's not any. It's just adding a lot of cost. Um, for most use cases that, of add-ons. To be clear, that's that's my my primary thing. I, the repairs can be costly, so you know the uh, the bundle author should be able to make those decisions. Um, Heath, if you want to see that the the regression, go check out the lot the change that's associated to that last bug. That's where it came from. It was yeah, not intentional I, by any means. Nobody's nobody's suggesting people purposely well, went in and put bugs. <laughs> I don't know. I've worked with Heath before. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It, it, uh, it, the problem, the the, pro, I don't, the reason I think you didn't see it is that it only comes when you have these version changes, um, and so it's a lot more likely for someone on public going. The case I saw was three nine, add-on bundle and a three ten dependent bundle. Yeah. To get the security fix in their main bundle and the wrong for it. Five two two one. Or just look at the pull request. It's, I mean, it was a trivial fix once I figured it out, which took far longer than I wish it would have. All right, so I think we could take this in four. I do believe this is a very good thing to have a whip because it takes a fair bit of understanding to even understand why you would want to do that. Yeah. And once you know that you can, you're like, oh, that's actually kind of nice. But before that, you're like, what? And right now, it's even more magical why am I doing this? What's happening? Yeah. Magic. Cannot find references. Is this a help request? This is, or is this just more fallout of the 311 not getting the votive install correctly? I don't know. I don't, I don't either. And as soon as I saw the mention of VB, I kind of closed the window. Um, I'm not sure what the right answer is there. Um, Yeah, I don't I don't know. Look how all their versions are zero here. I don't know if that's normal. I assume it's because they can't be found. Oh. Oh right. Duh. I mean it probably should be blank rather than an actual number, but Alright, should we ship this off to Wix users or, or do we want more information here? Um how about we just say try the next build of three eleven? Okay, that one's not out when yet. It has, when it has that that vote effect I did. Oh right, three eleven. This is three this is the latest three eleven. Oh right, that's yeah. what it says. Latest beta release. Dude, it's not even beta, but okay. Um I guess beta means anything before RTM in this nomenclature, doesn't it? That Thank you, works, Google. Yeah. Thank you, Google. Um so yeah. So Okay, yeah, let's let's yeah. do that and see if it comes back. Seems that's, yeah. I'll okay, I'll point okay. I'll point the I'll point to the bug and, and the right. fix and and I didn't whenever we get a build. I kicked a four build last night, but I didn't yeah. kick a three build because I figured we might take something here. Yeah. This is what I want to achieve. Way to point it out. Uh, in some cases, firewall exception, verbose log, tracked it down to the same fixed component GUID used in different installations. I don't exactly know what he's saying. It sounds like a component rule violation or the component was already installed. It and sounds it like it was actually installed in two different packages. So yeah. it no, it sounds like it worked, but it didn't uninstall. But it turns out he just had two references, so it didn't uninstall correctly. Yes, or I so see. it correctly didn't did uninstall. not uninstall. Right. Yay! Cool. Don't break the component rules, kids. Uh, short name file names. So someone actually has disabled short name paths on the machine. I looked at this earlier. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then Heat gets confused because it's doing some comparison between short name and file name, which is kind of interesting. 
Um, and I think we could take this in three X if someone wants to go make not short files file systems without short file names work, which may get more common soon, right? Are they Microsoft eventually turning this off? It it actually is it's really common as an optimization for VMs. Oh. Because maintaining the, the short file names is extra I.O. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I saw someone wrote a script or something as part of their their you know base VM stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, that that, that makes cool. sense. All right. Uh so yeah, we can take it in three X. Uh yeah, three X. It'll be I think three X. Does this have to go in four? Yeah, I think that's fine. It's, it's, I can't imagine it's I don't know. It, heat calm. Okay, I'm I've lost interest. Yeah. Well, I'm just worried about the backwards compatibility fix. I mean it's broken now, but I don't it wouldn't necessarily be something like it's not gonna break. I see. So when you call get short path name, it returns a long path. Interesting. So I guess you could check to see if they're the same. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can fix this. I think this could be fixed in 3X. Without okay. breaking. Because, I mean, if you have a machine that has short file names, it's not like this behavior is what you want anyway. So I can see that. All right. Uh, cannot set the managed runtime version to no managed code. That's interesting that someone has like only native code in their IS in their app pool. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I think this is a case where no needs to be something and it's not handling it. Where you like normally no results and don't change anything. Well, here it's like blank means don't touch anything. No means do something and yes means do something else. IS has a bunch of these, so I think this is just a, they want IS to do more, um, the IS custom action to do more, which seems reasonable to me. Um, the question is, is it breaking? It would probably be breaking if you weren't doing it today. I think we need to put this in four. Cause some would we know, add an explicit no value yes, here? That's the other thing you could do. That would probably be able to get it back in 3X. Yes, I think that would be able to get it back in 3X. Oh, oh, it'd have to be. A, would we have to make it a separate attribute? I, I, I'm assuming that manager no. time version is like a. Is no. it just a, a string? No, you, it could be another yes no default um, uh, kind of thing. This or, isn't. This isn't a literal version number. Version number. Manager time version. I thought that oh, was version. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, I see. It's oh yeah, you're right. I yeah, I don't know enough about this. This needs a design. Um, I say we put it in four and take the feature in four um, to fix it. I mean, obviously, I have no real opinion on the matter. Yeah, and if let's let's put it in four, and if someone wants to then take what's done in four and port it back to three in a way that doesn't break things, I guess we could look at that too. Okay. Yeah, it is a string. Yeah. Right. So I guess it'd be a magic string at this point. All right. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, let's put it in 4x. Someone's come okay. up with a way of doing it. V2. Phil's being silly. Okay. I think that's the CLR version number. Oh, I see what he's saying. Got it. Cool. So let's go look at a pull request. Um, I did this before the other one, so we're going to do this one. This one's going to be short. This was the bug that the other person opened that said, hey, uh, this error code is causing the whole custom action to fail, and it shouldn't do that. Um, and it's a really small change. Oh, and now I lose my mouse cursor. Good grief. All right, let's go over here. Sometimes this fixes it. It does. That's so weird. PowerPoint fixes it. Whoever said that. Um, all right. Yeah, so this is the whole fix, and now it's gone again. Whatever. Um, so before it was trying to compare against an error that was never going to match. 
Um, and I don't know who wrote this code because the that error comparison is backwards, so it's kind of interesting. Like, I wonder who wrote this. Like, I don't even know at this point. Um, can Can you uh, try to find the expando control there? Ah, uh, now I have the plus. Um, I don't know that it actually visibly changes when you're hovering. Never mind. Sorry. Got it. Oh, oh, look at that. Uh, got it. Ah. One expando, we got it. All right, look at that. Blind, one blind mice, one blind mouse, whatever. Um, right, so that first case was never happening, probably. Right. Which is right. pretty bad, but now it will, which I think is probably a good thing since I'm going to trust the MSDN call. That's someone really wanted that. Um, and then down here, the uh, H result and the log logs the error message, and then it says continuing, but it doesn't reset the error code, which then later on causes the thing to return failure if this is your last one in your loop, and so on and so forth. Seems pretty straightforward, yes? I don't know that resetting error success is necessary, but yeah, I assume the ER is fine, but I think it's probably overkill, but it's certainly not wrong. Because usually ER gets rewritten or not processed at the end. He's like, wait. DC asked get DC name trans D words not H results right that's why ER ER shouldn't be an H result ER should be an D word oh, I don't know what your what line are you talking about Heath 518 Well, that was changing the RPCS server to, I mean, changing the ER to have the Win32 bits added, and then doing the comparison against RPCS server unavailable. So I don't know that that was ever going to match in the end, since it was changed from whatever it was into a Win32 error, and I'm assuming the RPC prefix means it's an RPC error, not a Win32 error. So I don't think line 521 was getting hit in the past, which is probably the scariest part of this fix is that we're now going to start hitting 521. Right, but RPCS server unavailable is not a Win32 error. It's just the RPCS server unavailable. So, so I guess 521 is probably the, the scariest part of this fix for me. Um, but I'm going to guess that that's right. Right. Yeah, it's not documented to return anything other. It's not documented to return that error code or any RPC error code. Like I'm, I would. It's documented to return error no such domain. Hmm. Okay. Which would seem to be that that RPC error code. Or yeah, the meaning. And I don't know if there's a mapping here or not. Hmm. Actually it might be. I wonder if they're, you know, if they're mapped to the same thing, same value. 
and the documentation was updated to use a better error code than the RPC underlying one? Possibly. Um, no, they're not the same value at all. So that's not terribly useful, is it? No, not at all. So what, do we want to send this back with a question of, is this the right error code? Yeah, the question is, how do you answer that? Based off the documentation. Sorry, I'm, I'm always kind of in a funky spot. I can't do documentation while, while I'm presenting. So I'm kind of like leaning on you guys to go, yes, that's the right error code, or no, that's not the right error code, or... Uh, That function returns these errors. This error means go do this. I wonder if the problem. I mean, so one thing we've done in the past is just well, you know, we have this code that says it might have returned this error before. Um, and now it might also return this thing according to the documentation, but that's the only thing we have to go off. I'm going to go with the ladder. Now, come on, click. What just happened? Now it's going to let me leave a comment. All right, so I'm going to leave a comment to the effect of this change, which is both what Sean and Heath have now said, is that this change right here on line 518 doesn't seem rel related to the change of 543, 544, which is what the bug is all about. So can you go back and make sure that that's really what this was meant to be, and how about this error code or that error code? And I will go add that when I can actually do so, because this browser doesn't want to behave. Cool? Yeah, that works. All right. On to the agenda item that was missing from the agenda. I'd like to make the proposal, we met, we discussed part of this last week, uh, Tuesdays, 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, I think that was one of the times that we I threw out. Uh, what do people think about that? And AM? Also, yes, not, sorry, 24-hour clock, sorry, yes. doesn't even occur to me that I have to put AM in there. Um, well, then put in a leading zero. I could have done that, you're right. Um, so that was like, but you know, we could go a little later. I like that earlier. Uh, and Jacob, I think, said this was fine last week. I think John said this side time was good. I think he said, I think this time was pretty good. Um, it's like eleven thirty or you know lunchtime for some of you guys. All right, um, you're three hours ahead, right, Bob? I, never, I always want to put you in yeah, central, yeah. even though you're not. All right. At least you're not in Indiana. Anyway, so the other proposal I'd like to toss out is about doing this every other week. Um, every week is a nice cadence. I get that. We get through stuff usually in about a half hour, which is kind of nice. Um, but it's it's a lot of it's just a lot of moving stuff around, um, uh, putting it together, getting, you know, prep, make the meetings and stuff like that, and every other week would be a little easier, so they'd go longer, I think, the meetings would go longer, but would be less set up time for that. Oh, someone even later, oh, 6.30 p.m., oh, cool, 6.30 p.m., oh, all right, cool. So, what do you think people think about every other week? Um, maybe we can try it for the month of March, and... If it works, that's great. And if we find that we're really missing stuff every week, we can um, uh, go back to every week. Um, I will. Um, I mentioned this to Bob, and he was like, uh, well, you're really going to have to make sure you send meeting requests because people will forget whether it's on this week or off next week. So I will make sure that I get the meeting requests out uh, probably like the Friday before the week, so that will give you the weekend. Um, getting releases out and have quick turnarounds. So if we get behind on pull requests or stuff like that, we could do that. I would like to be able to do more on the email anyway. I think we've been honestly saving a lot of our stuff just for this online meeting rather than having it in email. 
um, which is, you know, okay-ish, except we are missing more people that might contribute by being on Wix devs that can't make this time slot um, and don't then follow up on reading or listening to the meetings. And then even if they do listen to meetings, they can't necessarily throw their comments in as easily. Um, so I was thinking, you know, we could do a bit more. If there's stuff we need to do per week, do that. Um, but uh, I wanted to see... Uh, if every other week would kind of work for people. So Phil's like, yeah, try it. Uh, Jacob, Sean, Heath, what do you think? Uh, Ronnie, every other week, all right. Any major things are like, no, 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 we must do every week for some reason. And naturally, if we fall behind or we're like, you know, that's a problem then. We can do it, but I know most of you guys are like, I just show up for a half hour, it's no big deal. It's, it's, it's me having to put meeting notes and prep and all that other kind of stuff. So, all right, let's see how it goes in March. Let's see if it is the savings that I think it might be on my schedule too. Um, and if it isn't, then, you know, we can always go back to weekly. Um, I know weekly was really important when we were doing lots and lots of bugs. It's a nice cadence, but yeah. so I would like to propose that the next meeting is the um, 8th of March, which is the Tuesday, two weeks from now, roughly two weeks from now. Well, a week and a half, I guess, really. So, and Jacob, if you think we need to have an emergency meeting, I'm always willing to do an emergency meeting. We certainly could have one. Like, hey, we need to have a meeting this week. We can always spin that up. Cool. 3-8 will be the next meeting. We're going to try this every two weeks for a couple meetings, unless, well, it just completely falls apart and we really need to have these weekly. All right, cool. So that gets us to the end. Jacob, you had something that I've already forgotten what it was, and I know Heath is saying he wanted to look at a pull request. Um, like if the G so if the GI team comes back with an answer quicker, we'll just we'll just put it in email, right? Like part of, That's kind of part of what I was saying is that I've been delaying a lot of emails and such like that, although honestly I think they came back to me Thursday, which means I could have written an email and then we would have been here. But that's a perfect example actually. I could have written an email yesterday saying, hey, here's the update of 3.10.3 that I'm going to get this week probably. Rather than waiting for Friday to send it, I would have just written the email and been done with it. Um, and that way also other people will see it. So, Because Wix devs has been relatively dead because honestly we're getting most of our Wix devs cleared out here, which is kind of nice, and we do record it so people can see it, but it's not really a place for other people to jump in here if they don't make this time slide, time slot. So I'm kind of balancing between those two. So, um, and if we need builds quicker, you know, if people are like, you know, we really need, you know, hey, we need to get this pull request in and we need a build, you can send that to Wix devs, and I'll try to get to it as quickly as possible. I can always make guarantees, but, you know, people are like, no, no, really, we need to get a build in. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do that. So I will always... We'll always make that happen if we need to. Um, it's been a little slower since most of our world for the last couple of months that I can remember has all been focused around security problems. Um, right, comment, all oh, right, about forgetting to remove the old builds from CodePlex pages. And in the end, it was kind of a, a, Bob actually asked me, he's like, all right, so should I go hide them? And I was like, no. <laughs> As much as I'd like to highly encourage everybody to move to 3.10.2 in a major way, the fact that we have this WinForms problem that people use WinForms, they'd be really stuck if we removed all the other builds. And I wasn't prepared, given that we knew about that issue. I, I, I couldn't, it was have a hard time justifying doing that. So that was my thing that I did it. Big update page to have bold red text stating that it's vulnerable. We could go back and add data to the previous releases. What do you think, Bob? I don't know that we can make it color in the wiki in the release pages, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't don't recall. Um, yeah, so so the only concern I have about removing them entirely is for people using older versions of Visual Studio, because remember back in Wix, Wix 3.8 is the last version of Wix that supports uh, VS 2008. 
So, yeah. you know, on the other hand, it starting with Wix 3.6, we're shipping, you know, vulnerable installers, and that just seems so bad um, that that might override uh, other concerns. Uh, yeah, obviously we can we can leave. Well, so we can leave the the zips up. Those aren't vulnerable, but they include vulnerable bits. So I'm like, uh, yeah, no. It's it's really hard. Um, this is the same problem that every other customer that uses a non-naked MSI to ship their stuff has as well, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. all have to sit there and go, hmm, how bad is this? So I guess I'm I'm inclined to I'm delaying this question until <laughs> I'm delaying this dilemma until we have a fix in three ten three. I guess is kind of that was the fundamental um, thing. And also the pulling it right away when we did the security release that seemed a bit um, aggressive given the other you know things that might have been scary to people that, hey, we've also removed all the other builds, so if you're hoping to make progress, yeah, that's not going to happen either. And so kind of wrapping all that together seemed like a not a great idea. So when we have 3.10.3, if it looks like that has the fixes to everything that it can, because, you know, honestly, beyond the GDI thing and the mistake made to the layout, which we have a fix for already, um, it's been, seems to have been fine. We've been using it everywhere, so that's been fine. So it might be then that we're like, all right, here's 3.10.3. No, really, it is the thing you need to move to now. Now we can think about removing yeah, certainly the other 3.10s. Um, 3.9. Yeah. Yeah. 3.7, you know. So I don't know. I, anyway, so let's burn that bridge when we get to it. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. Uh, Jacobs is very interested in branding, branding the pages, putting a warning on each of the pages that tell people they should move to 3.10.3. Yeah. Go to 3.6 and say, go to 3.10, 3.7, 3.10, Yeah, I guess we didn't do that simply because, you know, we thought we'd go back and actually remove them. Right. Um, I'm... Yeah, I mean, we don't have a lot of flexibility, but we could probably put, you know, a big bold heading one right. line at the top of each release and say, you know, this can version make, of Wix is vulnerable. Can we make all their other text small then? <laughs> put it in a small tag. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Relatively, it's huge. Uh, all the, this this release has been diminished physically, <laughs> visibly. All right, uh, I, that sounds like a reasonable idea, but it's mostly work. Yeah, let, uh, I, I would say we should we should do that. We we should do that even if we don't decide to to. All right, so let's do that. Remove them. Okay so all that? right, I I will I will take that action item. Oh God, I said it again. That's awesome. All right, Heath wanted to take a look at pull request three three four, which I think I can drop. Three, three, four. Allow lit binders to parse resolve this issue. Right. Yes. This has you said that this was already fixed in Wix four, so it's a matter of putting in three. Right. So we will uh could look at I think I was letting Bob take a look at that one. So and what's two nine seven? He if it can't go into three ten three. Not going in three ten three feature. No. Neither is this. It's not going in three ten three. Oh the dev fifteen. VS twenty whatever. Yeah, whatever the number is. There's something I thought. Wasn't there something in three ten? Dev fifteen? I think so. Oh, all right. Sorry, the, yes. yeah, you guys, the years, the, it's way too confusing. I give up. When is the next 3.11, when is 3.11 getting dropped next? There is a build, I don't know, this afternoon. I need to do one for the VS 
other fix, the 2015 fix, whatever the bug is, and the vote is fixed. So we need to do one soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when is this? This is open September 9th. So is this all good to go then? I guess that was the question. I don't know. If there's spaces there. I don't think so. There are there, oh, though. Maybe. I wonder if this is what's doing it. I think this is what's doing it. The fact that these are indented off this table. But the table should pick oh, it up. Oh, the table. Oh, that's interesting. Are there four? <laughs> well, there is here, probably. Sorry. we have, This is the bugs about the things being... Um, in formatted wrong on the website. So I wonder if that's it. I don't know. Anyway. Um we were we were. We waited until three ten two went out and then we immediately started dropping three eleven and we did a build I don't know, like that. So there's already a three eleven build out and there will be another three eleven build out shortly. So um Bob, do you wanna look at these before I do the build? The slit binder and things like that. Um, yeah, I took I, I took a look at them uh, before, so it shouldn't be. Yeah, I, yes, I will do that. All right, cool. Then I'll wait for you to change these, and then whenever these are in, I'll kick off the build for 311, and it will show up this afternoon, evening, whatever, something like that. It should be out today. Cool. 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 All right. Other things to discuss, stuff going on. Quiet. Well, we certainly had enough, and we are at an hour, so this is pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how every two weeks goes. I think our meetings will be a little longer, but I'm okay with that, especially if they still land within an hour. Um, I'm not sure they will. We'll see how well triage goes, things like that. But um, I'm, I'm hopeful, and just because some of the, <laughs> it's actually the. Um, what is it? Build up and tear down of the the meeting that actually is taking the time. Upload to YouTube. Blah, blah, blah. Every two weeks, we'll actually cut out a block of that. All right. So, two weeks from now, March eighth. That's a Tuesday at 9:30 in the morning. If you're in Fire Giant Standard Time, also known as Pacific Standard Time, right here, right now. Uh, early in the morning for some of us. Later, earlier in the afternoon, or just before noon, for most of you on the bench. Uh, until next time, you guys take it easy. Bye.